Welcome to Game of the Goon. How do we play harder? Welcome to our first tabletop role-playing game. Uh, this is our campaign. We've been playing it for a um, the best part of a year, and then we're coming to the second book in the module. So we thought, why not let you guys join us? Um, unfortunately, Grant can't make it today, so I'll be stepping in for his character, which we'll explain shortly. We do have a special guest star today. Um, it is Rob, if you'd like to introduce yourself Hi. and your character. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm going to be playing uh, Kellen Rulinor, also known as Runespark. I'm playing an alchemist, uh, artificial alchemist. It's a very experimental playtest branch of the game, but it's been working out quite well so far. I'm a rock gnome, guild artisan, about four foot tall, 110 years old. If you look at me, I've got brown hair, sort of a dark coffee brown skin, piercing green eyes, a long, almost black duster with patches on various different things. They look like mastiffs and a ladder for some reason. Maybe that'll come up in, in the story. Yeah, hopefully uh, you'll see it soon. <laughs> yeah. I've also got two bags across my shoulders, one across either side. One looks fairly fancy. It's It's got some uh, arcane symbols on it. The other one just looks like a drawstring bag. Yeah, again, maybe we'll see where that comes comes up. My alignment is uh, chaotic good. And, uh, oh, <laughs> I also have a mechanical dragon pet. <laughs> Larger than I am by quite a bit, and it is a copper, sort of um, uh, a copper green, so faded copper green. I, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah no, that's perfect. I think so. Um, so I'm obviously you know me as Lee. I was the DM for the last one shot. I'm the DM for this campaign as well. I will be stepping in for Fandrin, who is a um, a wood elf. He's got a very almost. Uh, very fancy looking robes here that seem to be deliberately frayed. They are sapphire blue. Try tried to cover them up quite a bit with just sort of cloaks and, and and coats. He has a pet panther called Ridicus, which follows him in his travels and helps him out. He's got his own reasons for joining the mercenary group. He's a bit distrusting of power for uh, certain events in his past, um, which hopefully will come to light very soon. Well, before we go into Wong's one, just like to say there's also a secret about Rob that he hasn't, Rob's character he hasn't revealed. It will be revealed during the game, but we're not going to say what it is yet, so it's a little surprise for you guys as well. <laughs> so, so yes, my character. So my character, um, so he's, the waist is a topax, so it's like a cat looking, right? I will say he's more looking like a kind of similar, like a, let me think, like a lapis, but instead of more yellow type, it's more on a grey colour skin. Almost well, like a snow leopard. Yeah, kind of like that. So I am, uh, I start a wolf. I'm a level 5 rope and deep with a uh, level 3 fighter. I got um, kind of light armor, moving very quick, as, as, as you can imagine a cat look like person. And then I am a chaotic neutral, so uh, kind of fit into my personality. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, that's, so that's, that's my character. Right, perfect. Uh, so I am the normal one out of the whole group. I am a human out of this whole group. Uh, my character is called Arthur Sea Dragon. I am part of the Council of the Water of the Deep. I'm a knight and I have my own little squadron. Uh, I also have a, uh, a mount as well. And uh, funny enough, it's actually a lion. A lion called Mouse. So that's, that's, that, <laughs> that, that, that is how it all started between me and, uh, me and him. Uh, it's because he's not quite the most intelligent animal, but he is still my favourite as well. My character stands at six foot, uh, he's got uh, blonde locks, and he's quite a heavy guy. So, yeah, that's how my character is, and I am a knight as well. From the fighter, clan, uh, also, from the fighter line. I also forgot to say, I am also around six foot as well. 
so we all kind of like similar yeah. height. Yeah, Fanrin's five eleven. Uh, apart from apart from Runespark, who is I was like four foot. Four foot. So I, I, I'm tall for a gnome, but I'm still very short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, last time. Um, so if you haven't checked out our intro video, check that out to get you a bit of an overview of what's going on in this world. Um, almost like a preset into the campaign. Um, our adventurers found themselves after f fighting a black worm speaker, Resmir, getting hold of a black dragon mask and sent off for safekeeping in a dragonborn tribe. They've, f they've found themselves jumping off or escaping a flying castle, landing some woods and being summoned by a uh, mysterious cancel, which they've heard over their travels, the Council of Waterdeep. At this moment, Eumonic, Fandrin, Runespark, all witness a red wizard, uh, six foot in height, bald head with uh, red tattoos on his forehead um, and arms in a big red length, uh, red full body length robe, put his hand on an Aracocra and, and teleport away. Um, the rest of you, uh, what you're doing? So you've witnessed this. You've got, you've bit, just got a uh, pigeon that's landed with a letter that says, uh, basically a, a summon to the Council of Waterdeep, which has a uh, the insignia, which is an owl bear with a reed symbol underneath. Um, Fandrin's got this letter at the moment, okay. um, and he's read it out. And there is a almost um, between you and uh, between Runespark and Fandrin have noticed that it's actually a method of transportation if they choose to okay. press the press the rune or okay. press the symbol. D before that, would I have um, would I have recognised the red mage? Uh, yes, you would recognise this red mage as Albrecht Joss, Albrecht Joss, who is a, uh, a a red wizard which you've come across on your travels. Um, you seem to know a previous traveller. Okay. And uh, can we assume that uh, no name will be s somewhat safe with his wizardly companion? Ooh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Okay. But you, you, you know that he can handle his own. Okay. Um, and you have no method of getting to him as mm, of yet. No. I, I, I'm going to look a bit exasperated at the rest of the group and... I, I can't follow him. I, d I don't have the powers to follow him. Fanarin's a bit shocked, and, and his reasoning, he says to you, um, well, we don't have the power to chase him or to follow him. The council has more power. Do we go there or do we not? <sighs> do, does, does, does the summon say what they want to speak to us about? Um, just to, about the cult. Okay. I'm, like I'm still, I've still got business with the cult. I, they, they've still got a lot to answer for. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm voting to go. We go, we go and see the council. What's your monarch doing? Is he agreeing or is he? Uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm just kind of quiet there, thinking, deep thinking of just what just happened, because no names basically well of my partner. Well, he's my partner, uh, so just disappeared. Now, because I'm not really magic, so I can't really do anything. Yeah, Fandrin. So, yeah, I'm just thinking. Uh, Fandrin and Ridicus come up and just like, um, so you basically you see this black panther <laughs> uh, with a little um, ba bandana, which is made out of a rug, um, a, a, almost a killing rug. Um, comes up and just taps you, taps you on your like leg, and just tries to comfort you. Fanon goes. We can, we'll find him, but we need to find another way to do this. And I, then I, I move my shoulder, trying to not let him then to touch me. I'll say I'm fine. Okay, so uh, you witness Fander in. Um, Svanarin's arm glow. He has a symbol of a um, of a harp and a crescent moon inside this harp. Um, it's a symbol of the Harpers, which is a faction which Svanarin's agreed to help out. Uh, begins to glow orange, and he begins to get in, begins to get a message. 
at the same time uh eumonic has a symbol of a um a dragon diving diving down with fire around it that begins to glow on your arm and you begin to hear a message that's water deep under attack this is a good opportunity to get a seat in the council as per your instructions previously okay. do I get any missives so, from any guild members that I would know inside Waterdeep from um, my guild your guild is an it's an artisan yes, guild yes, yes, your artisan guild would have the same thing you would get a, um, almost be a send message basically that comes to you um, and just Waterdeep's under attack Okay. Uh, need need support. Okay. Um, and in the background, you just hear a few like Wilhelm screams and just, like Pete, it sounds. Yeah. It sounds like a war zone. I'm gonna climb up onto Sephira's back. Uh, Sephira is the name of my dragon, um, and uh, I'm gonna get ready to to press my hand on the on the parchment to to teleport there. Yep. Fandrin Fandrin grabs. Mnemonic, are you coming? Yep. And same. I do the same. So I'm holding my jack. Yeah. Okay. So, and then you'll press the signal, uh, so the, the, the sigil even, um, and you begin to feel the weird sensation of like the material plane dissipating from you. And then you feel it reappearing. Now, back to Arthur Sea Dragon. You're stood outside uh, in the center of Waterdeep. You can see uh, the cult have come in. They're basically storm. Uh, seems to be very heavy force there seems to be factions that were going towards the vault there's um factions that sort of seem to be distraction these cults all in purplish purple purple robes a few led with um lieutenants that seem to have a gold uh, gold linings to their to their robes um mix of all different races dragon horns uh really really weird mix um you're stood outside a sigil written on the ground, the same sigil that the other party members um, are currently unaware of. I mean, you're waiting for them to teleport in place. Your job is to escort them back to the council of Waterdeep, which is a good 50 feet away, mm -hmm. um, in the middle of a war zone. In the middle of a war zone. You have got uh, about five other guards with you in your command. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, a quick question. Yeah. Are we fully rested? You are, are fully rested. We're fully rested all up to... Up yeah, to yeah. you had a long rest before cool. you... I thought, I thought we were, just making sure. Nah, that's fair enough. So... We were worth checking. Uh, so I'm here, so I tell the five. I'm just like, men, listen to me. We need to protect this place. I'm going to stay here, because I need to wait for the... Uh, for these people, for the heroes to come back and uh, talk about what has happened. But this village, this town, it's going to get ruined if we don't do anything. So if two of you, no, three of you go over to the vault, and the other two, head over and protect any civilians that you can. Okay, so you send you send three off. Um, they they run off fairly fairly organised. They are um, a council of water uh, water deep. Um, these soldiers are quite well trained. Um, it's a very big town. Um, used to have monorails, and what you notice now is that like monorails were like the dwarfs, like were dwarfs on minecarts, basically like pumping away to move this rail. Can't use it anymore. It's been destroyed. There's holes in it. Uh, bits of Ben. Bits of um, like supports and uh, a buckling under under this fire from cults, uh, magic weapons, anything they can get a hand of, uh, fireball scrolls, just stuff like that, just flying about. Um, there's a heavy uh, sort of plume of smoke as well, just from all the battle and the fire and the magic and the metal being burnt. Um, there's a few screams. It's very loud. It's very hard to hear. You, all the party members, come into this situation. Okay. You're stood facing, uh, facing Arthur Sea Dragon. Can um, I like do like a perception? Just yeah, make a check, general perception. Like, yeah, check my surroundings, see what's going on, because like we've been given the quick gist, but not like yeah, exactly. we're in it now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anyone else that wants to may do that as well. Sixteen. I rolled a fifteen. In my guild. There's no one in your guild in the immediate area. There's just um. A lot of like fight going on, um, and Arthur Sea Dragon in front of you. Uh, 16. 16? 16? Yeah, that's yeah. enough. You get the, the sense that this <clears> is a, a full on war zone. You've okay. just landed in the full on war zone. There's a almost a straight ish path to the Council of Water Deep, uh, 50 feet. It's a long sort of stretch of road along some houses. But... Would, would I know a 
you can go a around. A way that I can avoid yeah. conflict. You make a... You would. I wouldn't probably... I'll give you advantage. So uh-huh. you make a history check with advantage. Would I know this figure? This figure. Yeah. You'd know Through from reputation. the insignia is, you know, on his, on his like, armour is okay. Castle Wardeep. So you don't necessarily know... 19. Him, but you know his... His ca- affiliation. Account. Yeah, his affiliation. Okay. 19. 19. Yep, so you know, um, you can, you've... Think t- tactically and remember some. Uh, What's your rank? Do you have a rank? Captain of the. Is it captain? Okay. Captain. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm one of the knights, but I'm the captain of the. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I just I wanted to know how because if I recognised his insignia and stuff, I want to know how to uh, hail him because if I don't know who he yes. is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So that you do remember that Sildor or Hallwinter have shown you um, some different uh, different paths through the city through alleyways. It's a little bit safer, but cults are attacking from above and from below as well. There's like, you get the impression it's so, still risky. But so I jump safer. off my mount. Yep. I jump off mouse, and then I'm just like, mouse, <laughs> follow me at all times. Just stick close with me. Uh, so I turn around and I'm just like, because <laughs> uh, captain, what situation? So we need to head off straight away, back into the council of what to do. We've just literally had an attack in this place and I don't think we're going to hold long if we stay here okay. we're going to get surrounded very quick with so many cultists around me so quickly follow me um, I'm going to go walking with you guys because if I'm on the mount I'll be too far ahead of you guys so let's start Let's start heading off okay so the way okay. I'm going to do this is a series of skill checks um, mm-hmm. on the way to the council or deep there'll be three skill checks um, so as you're, as you're heading along you do take the alleyway the DC of the skill checks have been reduced because you've taken a safer route mm-hmm. um, but it still won't be easy yeah um, so as you're, as you're coming down, you see some cultists uh, sort of see you duck behind an alley. And um, while you're trying to be quick, mm-hmm. you can't you compromise, compromise a bit of stealth. Um, so you chase down. So I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw. Dex saving throw. Yep. Okay. I'll roll for founder in as well. I've got nine. Um, Fanderin. <laughs> Fanderin got six plus five. So he got 11. He got, a, a, <laughs> he, he got I got five. Five. Okay. In total. So, so, so five, <laughs> nine, 11. <laughs> so basically, everyone apart from you, Monarch, gets hit by an arrow as the cultists see you duck down, just fire arrows. They couldn't keep up with you, but um, they, they fire arrows. Um, so everyone's going to take. Five, six, seven, eight, nine points of damage oh, as um, as three arrows come flying, uh, flying through, and, and like human managed to sort of duck out of the way, and then sort of hits found in the back, and he's oh, I should have seen that. Be an archer. <laughs> nine, nine um, points of damage. Yep. Yeah, okay. For everyone, unfortunately. Okay. It's quite a lot. It's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you managed to keep moving. Um, are you still heading the same path? Yeah, no, I I know that this is the um, this Do path. Do I need to roll for Sephira? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. I know that this path is probably. I know we've just been attacked, Monic. but. Monic needs to roll for. Oh yeah, you need to roll for your um, dragon as well. Okay. Um, yeah, because I know this is the safest route to go home, so I'm just like, you know what, uh, to to go back to the Council of Waterdeep. So I'm just like, we'll still stick on. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen. <laughs> I don't know what's the saving Oh, that's fine. That's fine. So, um, so Mokima, he's you uh black dragon. He stole from a hatchling nest <laughs> and brought up as his own. Uh, managed to avoid, just like easily avoids the arrow. Just sort of does a barrel on there and just like avoids it entirely. Uh, Safira, not so much. Safira, unfortunately, gets an arrow just stuck in a in a like clockwork parts in a in a yeah. just sort of stuck in. Cause a little bit of damage to the to <laughs> the cogs and, yeah. and the internal workings being she, a mechanical she, dragon. She damaged. She, she damaged. damaged. <laughs> I give her a little pet on the leg. She can't feel it, but no, no. But... Oh, do I need to do I need to ruffle mouse as well? Uh, because of your traits. Oh yeah, I take the you take okay. the damage. I take the damage because well. it's a feat for yeah. um, a knight fighter. Um, right, so you. you Managed to move, get you managed to escape from the other cults behind you. 
Um, make a perception roll first, everyone. Perception. Yep. I don't know if this helps, but um, Mouse has got a perception, passive perception of 13. In that case does. that helps, it helps. Uh, 15. Uh, perception. 11. 19. Okay, okay. Uh, Founder and achieves. So only you, Monarch, doesn't see this. Um, you see some cults <laughs> up in the roof pushing some boulders. Um, so cults up on the roof, uh, they've managed to climb on the roof, and uh, you manage to hear, hear like uh, some rocks falling. And you look up, and you, you see they're just trying to push off some like debris and, and like wooden. Can I, can I throw some uh, chemical fire at them? Yeah, for sure. Go for it. Make a make an attack roll. <laughs> uh, 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 actually, they need to make a deck saving throw. Uh, deck save I, I don't roll, they make a deck save. Okay, yep, so they make a deck save on throw. Uh, so, f- 17 and 16. Uh, is it against my decks? Against your... Uh, what is it against? Your, it'll be your 8 plus your proficiency plus your decks. So oh, 8 plus my proficiency plus 11. my decks. Bad. Um, <laughs> 11 plus uh, your decks. Uh, 11 plus my dex. My dex is only... Oh, my dex is 2. So, 14. So 14. Um, unfortunately, they both make it... They do take damage. They just take half. Okay. Uh, that is 3d6. So, go for it. As you... As Runespark pulls Four. out uh, a file of... 6. Al- Alchemal... Um, and 1. Uh, so, it's 11. 11 in total. So, half that rounded... Half that. Rounded down. down. So... 5. 5. So they're, they're they're looking wounded as you, as you pull out a, pull out a vial from your uh, from your satchel, yeah, and you and you chuck it up in the roof and it hits the cultists like sort of legs sort of thing and they sort of like slip a bit and like fall over a bit and it's, they back off but okay you think they're still alive, um, you might not just hasn't seen any of this. Okay, I, sh- I shout over to him, <laughs> uh, cultists on the roof, and now and now he's now more aware of the roof. Luckily, he saved you there. <laughs> everyone else is everyone else is fine. Um, so you managed to lead them around a few more uh, wind alleys. So you managed to go like a right and a left, and then back on yourself a bit, and then yeah. right again, just to, to wind through the alleys. Um, not necessarily going a straight path. What, but going, what's the distance between us and the tower at the moment? Like now, about twenty feet. Twenty feet. So um, I, I I now jump onto uh, mouse. Yep. So you jump onto to mouse, a straight can mouse. I jump, can I jump on to uh, Mockima as well? Yeah, yeah. Mockima can fly low, uh, low wow. enough to to pick you up. Um, you can do the same as Vera if you want. Um, I'm going to keep running with um, Thunder and yeah, okay. um, and, uh, and and keep like keep our little squad of four together just to, okay. to keep up the rear guard, as it were. Yeah, perfect. So so you're running. I need um, you have all got advantage because as you're running to the Council Water Deep, there's more soldiers there that get the um, arrows from the, the guard towers and stuff. So you got advantage. You turn around and you see. Um, some more cults and they've got some guard drakes and some cobalts and stuff for you and they're just charging this wall just charging at you they're they're catching up to you and Fandarin. can i chuck um a couple of tanglefoot bags behind us yes so cool. what are the mechanics are um like? they are uh so again i reach into my alchemical bag and i pull out like a a black tar substance that's sort of squirming in my hands and I throw it on the ground and it creates a um, five foot radius of difficult terrain and uh, if anything goes into it they they get hot basically I'm just going to chuck like three or four of these yeah. behind me just to like create patches of difficult terrain that's fair enough, uh, Make just to make a general dex um, for a dex check 15 that's good, that's good so um, between between you, um, you manage to get enough. Um, you have advantage now if you want to try oh, for okay. I'll, I'll try again. Yeah, yeah. You never know. Uh, uh, Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try. If you got a career, you might have any yeah. events then. But, um, yeah. But, but like that's enough. Um, and you manage to throw between that and then the, the guard towers firing arrows out and, and pinging them. Can I um, um, couple of javelins for? Can I just? I kind of want to uh, quickly tell Mouse to turn around. And do a roar to see if I can do do some intimidation make, to make them like run away. Yeah, make intimidation with mouse's stats. Mouse's mouse is stats charisma. Yeah. <laughs> After that, can I? What? That's After pretty good. I so minus one. So fifteen. Um, fifteen. We'll come back to that in a second. After I saw the captain, that's it. Can I try to do the same with Mockingbird? 
<laughs> yeah, you can. Um, <laughs> uh, make, <laughs> so, <laughs> so make a roll, make an intimidation roll with mocking that. Uh, over um, fifteen. As as the as the lion mouse turns around, gives an almighty roar, haw, um, sort of hears it and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and then carries on running. Um, <laughs> cats don't like each other, apparently. <laughs> uh, just so, just it for does a, seem to for, you see some for a little description because I haven't said about yeah. mouse. Uh, mouse isn't your normal type coloured um, lion. It's actually a silver lion. Nice. Oh, so okay. It's nice. literally all pure silver. Yeah. And a lot of the cultists and co- some of the cobalts not being very intelligent, so just just sort of start like walking backwards slowly. So like everyone's running forward, and they just start like walking backwards. So I don't know if anyone's seen like the mummy, and like that kind of thing. Like the one guy just walks backwards as everyone's walking forward, <laughs> and basically like, all the cobalts are doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some I'm, of the cultists back. I'm going to head Sphera. I'm going to tell Sphera to head on ahead and get get inside. Basically, I don't want her in, in yep. danger. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, Sphera goes ahead uh, full speed. What? And in the same time, call Mokshura, and I got fifteen. <laughs> Mokima does the same thing, a little bit after, and does on my ear. Um, not quite as impressive, <laughs> being a copy. Um, but it's enough. And then some of the step back a bit, and and you manage to make it into the council. As soon as you're in, they close uh, these large wooden double doors. Um, and they they reinforce it with like bars and, and wooden bars, metal bars really secure door um, and you're in a sort is, is a, there any like murder holes or anything by the sides of the doors or there the is doors? there is a couple of okay can I like chuck a couple of alchemical fires like through those out in front sure, of the door I won't make you roll for it but um, just, just a like, couple chuck out is, slow is them enough. down I'm just like whatever I can do I'm just like chucking out there okay yeah. so at, at this point I jump off yeah. I jump off and I tell I tell one of the guards to come over and tell him to take um, take mouse over to the stables yep uh, that's one of the guards comes takes mouse over uh, you're in a crescent moon, uh, almost like a lobby with um, some stairs going up to like two, three floors. You reckon? Mm-hmm. Uh, large, large, wide stairs. You, you're talking twenty feet wide stairs um, going up. A good, okay, okay, sixty I'm, feet or so. I'm gonna get Sephira to guard the door, basically. Just like stay here, guard the door. I think we're gonna go and see the council. Yeah, H- some here, of the guards are looking like clockwork. <laughs> this is interesting. Heroes, we have no time to waste. The siege is upon us, and we are literally they were close to losing. Follow me, and I'll take you over to the Queen. Okay, Captain, lead the way. Uh, I head them. I head over to the Queen. Yep. So you, you lead them up the stairs. Uh, you lead them up through um, almost like a viewing platform. Of what it appears to be, it's a large circular room with a dome roof. Um, as you. Uh, approach a 20 foot corridor um, then you come into a round circle about 50 feet wide um, around you just seems to be empty um, empty space as you step in the center of the circle you hear a mechanical sort of clicking um, and what being an alchemist and, and tinkering with with it you can see that the wall actually rotates um, and as it rotates you effectively see um, they're almost like steps almost come out um, they're not actually steps they're seating arrangements okay. for members of the council they've each got an insignia um, would I would I have seen this before I mean I'm not a, I'm not a local to Waterdeep not, but I do have a guild house here you do have I've a guild house so you, you wouldn't um, you would recognise um, Order of the Gauntlet which is a a sword with a hand clasping the blade yeah um, you'd recognise that you'd recognise um the harper symbol, yeah, which is the crescent moon. One of them found her in the tattoo. The harper, um, the harp symbol with the crescent moon. Yeah. Um, the others you wouldn't. Oh, one you would know is the presser price store, which is basically the fantasy Costco of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not surprised they've got a council seat. You, you see the wizard guilds. Yeah. Um, uh, would the artificers are art, like? Would they all be under one they're, general like? So your understanding leadership. is they're, they're under one leadership. So um, the alch- the alchemy is a branch, um, a sub branch of the wizard guild. Yeah. Some yeah. wizards are with it, and some wizards are against it. Um, what yeah. you do notice <laughs> is, it's fair. in the center, as this becomes like raises up and goes around, they are in front of you. Uh, the queen's at the highest. Um, the steps going down. Um, the queen addresses you. She goes. Not that it makes much of a difference. I'm going to take a knee. 
Yep. So you Not that it makes much uh, difference in my height, but Fanderin sure. Fanderin does does the same. Um, he knows how to deal with it. Um, he knocks you on the back. I'm just, I'm standing up. says to you, Noble, <laughs> definitely bow. <laughs> I yeah, I you don't need to. I walk next to the queen. You can't walk to the queen. She's on the you're on the viewing platform. And she's oh, we're on, on the flute. Like, you're, you're on I, the I thought platform. I was one of her guards. No, no, no you're on the viewing. You, no, 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 you're on like a viewing platform, like a round bit, and there's like oh, okay. space around you, just like railings, and you can't reach them. But you, she, you don't have to bow if you don't want to. Okay. Well, I am going to bow. She is my queen. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take a bow. <laughs> she is dressed. She is a um a moon elf. Um, so she wears a very, um, very pale skin, um, very pointy ears, um, very, very young complexion almost. Um, she's got long black hair, um, really piercing blue eyes. She's about, um, you want to say six, six two something like that. Um, but she has, she has sat down, um, and she wears a silvery, silvery metally sort of um also it's like a dress um it does look like the the skirt part of it is detachable okay um machine stir and she introduces you and goes adventurers i'm queen queen romalia hundry i'm the queen of Waterdeep, and i've heard of your exploits and that's why i summoned you here me and to my council members, which perhaps I should introduce. Um, she goes, the leader of the wizard guilds, Harry. Um, and you see, it is a a wizard, um, and he has a white dragon sat on his shoulder. He's very socially awkward. <laughs> Um, and and she explains to you that he he's been he's the one that set up the guild he's the one that set up the alchemist section of it. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw him a sort of almost lazy salute, like I I would know who this person is. You've heard of his exploits. Yeah. You've heard of the uh, I, lost lost mine. And and sort of uh, I, I'm off my I'm off my knee now and I've I've, I've sent him a salute and a and a bow, maybe a little cocky. But... She she points over to um, Silver Hall Winter and goes, this is. Sildor Hallwinter, he's our co strategist with uh, Arthur Pendragon, who likes to take more of a field role when he strategizes. I literally look at look at uh, Sir Hallwinter and then I'm just like, I do this, like put my, I, I put my, I, I raise my right arm onto my shoulder and I'm just like, and bow it. Sildor Hallwinter gives you a little nod um, and he goes, My chief equipment's master. Gongos, the owner of the Presser Price stores, and the owner of the most roundest shield I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm so glad he brought him to Presser Press. <laughs> um, just, just for the viewers, uh, in the previous campaign, um, they basically had a running joke that only the cleric had the most round shield. <laughs> the only shield in the game. This is the same cleric that now owns the Presser Press stores. <laughs> the only shield that was ever been able to find. <laughs> um, and she points you to some other other members. Um, they're not so important ones. <laughs> they're, they're not so important, but they, um, they still have their role to play. They're, they're more advisors and they're more... Okay. Um, um, so she points to Oliver Froome, which you've met before as well. Um, he he's one of the faction leaders. Um, she explains to you that um, I've been using factions to help fight against the cult. I'm aware that you've run across these factions. A couple of people have joined them. Um, and she points to Founder in, and she um, goes, "Do you understand the danger of the cult?" And just addressing the pie, so mm. anyone that wants to speak. I'm I'm just standing there with a grin on my face, like I I've seen a few of these people before, but I I'm I'm just generally enjoying the uh, the attention, to be honest. Yep. Uh, as most gnomes tend to. Fair enough. Fan rin. I said. I oh, yeah. said. I said. Um, yes, we understand. That's why we're here. But what can we get? What can we get from? 
you guys. Uh, Founder, yeah. Founder in, uh, as you're speaking, as Founder in tries to interrupt you and says, uh, what my friend is trying to say... I'm just rubbing my face. We're... I turn around and give him a look. <laughs> yeah, you just give him the evils. <laughs> <laughs> so Arthur gives uh, you the evils, and Founder in, Founder in would say, what my friend here is trying to say is, we understand the danger of the cult, but we need equipment or uh, favours to help help in our battle against the cult supply our efforts it's uh, we're not looking to extort we're merely looking to supply ourselves against the dangers that are coming make a persuasion roll with advantage because founder is helping you okay. I feel like it's better for you to roll because I'm rolling for founder and I've always okay <laughs> I only have a plus one charisma founder will roll and I guess oh. three yeah that's good because I, I, I got eight <laughs> With advantage. <laughs> oh, eight with advantage, and yeah. then Founder in has a better roll. I uh, say so fifteen. Um, and being from his background as well, he he knows how to hand himself around royalty. Um, the reason I'm being quite vague is a lot of the party members don't quite know his backstory. So hopefully that gets revealed out um, in time. Um, so so she goes. Well, we can offer you money. We can offer you equipment, or we can offer you information. But what we ask is to stop the cult, stop them getting the masks, and bring them back to Tiamat. We believe they've only got one already, and you're the only adventurers that I have seen that have managed to get close enough to a worm speaker to get a mask, let alone kill a worm speaker. Well, this is true. We managed to remove a mask from their their clutches it's in safe hands and being looked after um we did kill one of the speakers um two i believe it was two others got away or we we glimpsed them at least um do, do you need our immediate assistance with this siege right now or do you want us to go straight no, after the worms we don't want the siege we want you to go after the worms because we feel okay. if they get the masks and i strongly believe if they get tm um get all the masks and bring back Tiamat the, the goddess of dragons even at half strength we don't have a chance our world will be destroyed it will be destruction and chaos I've done a little research into this myself and I, I sort of nod towards the head of the, the wizard's guild and and obviously not as much as your advisors what you say is definitely true um, have you got any leads uh, Sealed or Hall uh, speaks up and goes, "Yes, we we do. We have uh, um, a num a number of leads. The most the most prominent. Um, we have the locate. We believe we have the location of Varum, the White. Uh, we believe he's the last person with the White Dragon Mask. Um, we can send you towards him um, and direct him." I, and perhaps you can find out if you still got it and grab it back. I may, uh, if I may interrupt for a moment, have you managed to ascertain the uh, uh, identities of all of the dragon speakers? And I say, if you haven't, I have, I have a list here of which I've, I've evidence I've managed to c she, collaborate. She goes, oh, that's interesting. We have Severin as the leader of the cult. That's that's what my notes say also. Yeah. Um, and Resmir uh, the, has been dealt with. with Resmir with the Black Dragon Mask, which we believe has been dealt with. We have sent some covert operatives to um, escort your party member. I will Should they try keep and up with send him? a message to him not to do anything stupid. He's a good man, but very rash yeah. and prone to anger. Um, so. According to the to what I've uh, collaborated, I have uh, Varum the White, as you said. Yep, which we're aware uh, of. Galavan the Blue. Oh, we weren't aware of Galavan. We'll take a look into him. And uh, uh, I believe it's Nerevin the Green. There has been reports on Nerevin the Green. Uh, we haven't quite found his location yet, but we've got our, our best operatives on that. We also have operatives looking at other methods of disrupt, uh, disrupting the cult. We have, I don't know if you hear the, the pulsing in your ear. Yes, I, I, I've heard something of it and our Dragonborn friend felt a call. We, uh, exactly. Uh, and then 
um, Sildor says, we believe this is. Um, so Sildor, who oh, is this for this description, haven't given it. Um, he's a little bit older than uh, the first campaign. He's got a bit uh, sort of white hair, a bit of a white scrabbly, scrabbly beard. He's a um, human fighter in, still in his armor. Um, he, he says, we believe that Drakhorn is summoning dragons up north. We're unsure why or to where, but we believe the less dragons up north, which we assume is either the cult's base or, or something that the cult plans to use. If we get less dragons up there, then perhaps once we do figure out what it's for, and if we make a strategic storm of their base or, or etc., then less dragons would be definitely useful. So we could do with getting, stopping, finding more information about that or stopping it. And we believe that is in uh, a place called the Sea of Moving Ice up north. Which I believe Runespark Fanrin have heard before. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so is this where you believe Varum to be also? We believe uh, Varum's in a different place. Varum, uh, sorry. Our Harper leader, Leosin, um, who was an elven monk which you've come across before and rescued him from a cultist camp. Oh. Um, was that also when they met me? Yes, that was also when they saved Runespark. Yes. Um, I remember. Yes. Um, wow. They believe that is in a different place. They believe that is. Just checking my notes here. What's your first session was this one? Yeah. Yeah. They believe that is in a settlement called Boreski. Uh, so B O A R E S E S. Uh, Sierra, yeah. K, Kilo, Yankee, uh, Y, R, Romeo. Oh, sorry, R. You have to be slower. From K Y R, K Y R. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Borisku. Um, Borica. bridge. Uh, bridge is the last word. Oh, bridge. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that's the settlement name, guys. It's the the first name's hard to spell. Bridge. Okay. <laughs> Risky yeah, bridge. Okay. Um, and he goes, that was his Faram's last known location. We don't know he'll pan out to any usable leads, but our resources are spread thin as we're trying to work out what's going on up north, where the other masks are. We're trying to stop these cultists going after the vault. We're not sure what they've got or what's in there that they're going after. Mm -hmm. How far and he away looks is a bit this nervous bridge? when he says that as well. How far away is this, this uh, Boriskian bridge? bridge? Um, it's in a he goes oh it's not too far it's just over the serpent hills we can get you uh get, we can teleport you to the serpent hills uh, but if you move any further you end up running into yanti which um spell y yeah. u a n uh, dash hyphen yeah uh, t i um, they are a species of humanoid snakes. Oh, okay. Um, they're really good. very Asian, just so. It is. <laughs> um, so they're they're obviously a, a threat. To, it's it's interesting that cults go in there because you, Solo explains it seems dangerous. Okay. But it also seems. Can I just have a quick check on Sil uh, Sir uh, uh, Silver Hawinter, please? Because obviously uh, he had a. That was like quite a quite a his it, when he was talking obviously i was looking at when he was yeah, talking yeah. and he had this after he finished speaking he had quite a nervous Make face on it, so, so his face wasn't how it usually is insight yeah oh i appreciate Fanarin it probably that. did the same but Fanarin has failed i have failed as well eight <laughs> i ask as a, as a favor to the council yeah um i'm going to ask if they keep themselves uh, or if they find out any information on a gnomish woman uh, called Yanira, um, like if they keep if they can keep their ears open for her. Yeah, the queen goes. Um, Yanira, a very familiar name. It, it's my mother's yes. name. She she's been missing for nearly two years. Interesting. 
So he goes, I can't guarantee anything. No, of course not. I think I just... I've heard the name before, but I need to check my records. Thank you. If I hear anything more, or find my records, I will let you know. And I just, I'm just going to bow slightly. Um, how much time do we have to prepare before we need to um, leave? As, as I, before, before, uh, as yeah. a, my queen, I have, a, I have a favour to ask you. As I know that we are under siege, I should be out there helping out um, the guards and everything. But I would like to travel so that I can stop Tiamat after what and the cultists of what have they done to my for my fellow um, guards that I that was so close to me. She unfortunately, goes. granted. Thank you, my lord. Please escort them to the makeshift selling area, and then Gongos goes. Excuse my Scottish accent. Um, he goes, right, guys. Follow, um, follow Arthur into a, a makeshift press a press store that we set up in the, in in the Waterdeep Council. Um, he's he's kind of like short and 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 ginger beard and <laughs> quite chubby, but he is a. Can I? Uh, I'm just gonna. Ask him, um, do you happen to have an alchemy lab in here anywhere? <laughs> Gongos goes, points to Harry, and Harry just goes, yep, and says no more. <laughs> um, and Gongos goes, what that means is you, you have full reign. Um, <laughs> Excellent. It's, it's all, it, and he tells off to take him there as well, and it's just next door. It's not like cool. they basically made a. Um, a you would know this as well from from being in there. They basically <laughs> converted the council, um, and like the grounds into basically makeshift sort of rooms of like um, mm. equipment gathering, alchemy workshops, gathering, workshops. But they've kind of kept the alchemy bit separate, and it is just like it's got thick it's, walls. It's thick <laughs> walls. Like you just hear every yeah. now and again, oh, you just um, hear explosion coming from. So it wouldn't take you much to find yeah. anyway. But. Cool, excellent. Um, I just thought about this. How much gold do I have? What's your background? Uh, you knight. need to roll for your starting yeah. gold. Uh, said, you, don't worry, can, it, said, Lee, don't Lee worry it says here. We can adjust. Ten, a ten gold pieces. No, you, you, <laughs> no, no you that's every either. base character starts oh, that's with that. Every base character. You uh, get to roll. You have to roll. Based can, on your class. We can do that later. Yeah, we'll um, do that in a minute. We can say you'll have a thousand five now. <laughs> ooh, easy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Rich man I am. <laughs> well, you're a queen soldier, so you should be quite... But it should do well. because I've got. I wish. I mean, I don't have a thousand gold <laughs> now. <laughs> well, can I, I do actually. Can I, I... To the queen, but not loud, to say, what do you know anything about Mika Horn and the Giants? She goes, We do. Mika Horn, he's been helping the cults, been against him. He seems to be a mercenary of his own accord, but he is dangerous. And we is know very little of where he came from or or who it was. I'm really unsure. Do you know, is there anyone I can find more information about that? She goes, we can send some scouts to, to have a look for you, providing you help us in our endeavours. Or send some scouts and see if we can find more information about Mika Horn, his goals, or where he came from. No, Should you help us? Yes. You're welcome. Right. Um, as before, before you go away, I, I just say, hello everyone. Uh, obviously, I'm the newest party member of the group. Just like to say, um, according, uh, granted by the Queen. I uh, just like to introduce myself. My name is Arthur Sea Dragon. Um, I uh, uh, my father is uh, his name is Lance Sea Dragon. Um, he only used the name Lance because uh, he was an uh, apprentice of uh, of Arthur Pendragon. But um, his real name is actually Larry, but he used the name Lance from now on. But other other than that, just like to mention that uh, I am quite a skilled warrior trained from when I was birth uh, from when I was young and uh, hopefully I can help you guys on your endeavours ah nice to meet you lad 
and I'm gonna just sort of reach up a hand. You are four foot taller You're than like me. Really, like, like three the foot. Are ridiculous. Yeah, like three foot taller than me. <laughs> you can call me Rune Spark. Okay. Everyone else does. Nice to meet you. Fandrin goes, shakes his hand, shakes your hand, and he goes, "I'm Fandrin. This is Ridicus." Mm -hmm. And he points to his uh, panther, and he goes, "That's you, the yeah." Okay. <laughs> he had, uh, just, he, had just, he was quite rude to the head. queen. He was I quite rude to the queen head. earlier, Sick. so. Fortunately, uh, don't me may, may not get along well with him. <laughs> the fanner explains to you guys, yeah, it takes some growing, but he uh, also just to like to like to mention to you guys, the lion outside is my steed, the silverback lion. Uh, it's, uh, it's his name is called Mouse. I think you might have heard him once or twice <laughs> that I've called him. So uh, I definitely yes. chuckle at that. Perfect. And the the silver the the the, the bronze dragon over there, that's Sephira. You can talk to her, but. She won't talk back. She she can't talk. The queen goes. It's a very I intricate device. It was a labour of love. She is uh, a a long time project of mine. She goes. Oh, we appreciate things like that. Hence Thank our you. setup. Um, she goes. I have business to attend to. So I hope I left you in safe hands. Thank you, Your Majesty. Um, you can come back here at any time for to give information or. Or ask for requests. Um, you have a. Um, you have as long as you like. We advise you to move soon, especially if you want to check down the run. The longer he stays about, the more chance we've lost him. Okay. Are you gonna say something, Rinspar? Uh, not it's out out of uh, out of character. Um, okay. did we decide what my potion was gonna be called? Um. Oh, the, so that, yes. that one <laughs> yes um, we hadn't thought of a name for it yet had we no we hadn't thought of a name I, I want to go one. and create some oh wait yeah um, I've got the I've got the finances to make it okay yeah you've got enough finances you can make some potion in the alchemy yeah I'm going to call it I'll let you come up with the, uh, the yeah. work and title work and title <laughs> Let him think about it. It will come yeah, out. It'll it'll come out, it'll it'll come out during yeah. some time. Yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah, like, I'd, like <laughs> I'd like to go and uh, uh, prepare <laughs> maybe two more. Yep. So you you managed to go, go make uh, prepare these like uh, brownishy. Uh, it's a yellow and a brown. Yes. So um, I'd like to basically make two of each. Is there a forge inside the castle? You could find one. Yes. I could find a forge, definitely a forge. Okay. Um, to do, to definitely be able to do that as well. Um, so. Is there anyone I can help to? Can get some maybe magic armor. Yes, you can. Uh, well, magic. You can go to the forge as well. To be fair, and ask for magic armor. It'll take a long time to make magic armor, especially when now the resources <coughs> are dwindled as well. Well, this cost me my usual gold cost to get these created. Um, you'll have a discount as well, so maybe a twenty percent discount because you're in the council. Okay. So, so if it's hundred, it's uh, so. No, it's uh, okay, that's cool. That's... I'm gonna buy armor and shield, a heavy armor and a shield. Right. I'm using a great sword that uses two hands, so having a shield is pretty much useless. Yeah. <laughs> so I just get a heavy armor. Yeah. I'm gonna call it. Your potion is called lichen blood. Lichen blood. Okay. Uh, before that, can I go buy an armor? Or get yes, a yes, or you can. Actually, would the castle just have a well, you, heavy a, armor? The castle will have a heavy armor for you. Yeah, to can I just change my it's... light armor to a heavy yeah, yeah. armor? So you wouldn't have to buy anything that's like um, mm. any like standard armor and stuff. If you want magic armor, you will have to buy or pay for the resource at least to get it. Um, so you can go, you can go to the armory and manage to, to get out. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. sorry, our um. Like rapiers, they're martial weapons, aren't they? They're not simple. Rapiers are... They're finesse weapons. I don't know if they're simple or martial. I'll have to check. Sorry, them. I'll... Um, no, it's all right. I'll check. I'll look. It's, I, I would kind of like to upgrade my standard weapon. Yeah, which is fair. <laughs> I have I have <laughs> a hand axe and a light hammer, which I've had the whole of the first campaign and used twice. <laughs> which um, is effective. <laughs> yeah, but my dex is actually at a point now where it's relatively useful. Yeah, exactly. So you can you can definitely check. What are you looking for? Uh, so simple. It's got to be in this area. 
It is not. It's important. No. Okay. Not to worry. I can't. I, I can't use it anyway. Well, no, I can. Okay. I just wouldn't get to. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Yeah. So you head. Never into, mind. You head into a forge. Um. It. It's really like a blacks, like a, a blacksmith's workshop. It's tons of anvils, um, a load of little sort of pots full of like molten, molten metal and liquid, and really high heat furnaces and troughs of cooling water. Bit sooty, bit dusty. Um, now you come in uh, a little, um, a little goblin comes up to you and goes, sort of runs up to goes. Right, mister. I'm, I'm Oli. Um, what, what do you want in the forge? Um, what if I got this armor here? Can you make it? Actually, can you make my armor better? Improve my armor? And then I show, well, I'm, what I'm wearing is like a, Um, so he goes we can enchant but we can't we can enchant but not make magical we enchant I take an enchant yes mm -hmm. and also if you he's can. he's grabbed your armor and he's about to run off and I said wait wait, wait. I, I still got some more 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 for mister and then I show, I show him my weapon, my my two of my weapon, life dagger and death dagger. And I show him one is it's like a almost white look like dagger, and one is dark purple. And I show him, can you improve those pair? No, my daggers, daggers already enchanted. Cannot improve. Uh. Only can do armor, and then he okay. he goes. Will be three hundred gold for resource. Sorry, say that again. It will be three hundred gold for resource. He says to you. Three hundred gold. Yep. And I said, and then I said, I got two hundred and fifty. Can I get some discount? Make make a make a straight persuasion roll. I almost gave you a disadvantage. <laughs> can I go? Is there a place where I can change my weapon? In the armory. I can go to the yeah, yeah, you can get the armory. Nice. Uh, you get the armory as well, and you get a weapon for just switch if you wanted to. I don't really use weapons. No, I know. <laughs> it's just in case I, you want to get a No, changing. I basically had the best kind of weapon that I can use. I'm changing my great sword to a halberd. Okay. Cool. I got. <laughs> um, he just goes no 300 gold too late still made and he just bolts wait, wait, <laughs> he wait, dash wait. It, he's and dashed into he dashed wait, into wait, like wait. the distance he's gone you see him like running like see him disappearing like the city he's only a small goblin and he's fast <laughs> actually no forget it I'm going to stoke with a great sword I'm going to go down to forge as well um, you can go to the armory and re replenish your stone leather armor if you want if he wants to borrow some money he can and how he doesn't need to borrow money he just wants everything at the cheapest price he just wants everything cheap he's got is enough money he's got oh, he's, right. probably, he's probably the richest one out of all of us actually no probably not but he's a rogue is there anyone I can talk to as well <laughs> this, there's this like people like you okay, like, I've got nearly a thousand gold many like guards getting yeah, handing their weapons for repair and, and stuff um, gems. I want to do um, my stuff as well um yeah, uh, I go to the forge and ask for an enchantment on my sword, the great sword as well. Yep, it'll take time. Yeah, but I can do I'm it. I'm gonna go um, and patch up Severa. Yeah, as soon as you go patch up Severa, so Rinsmark goes patch up Severa. Um, you go up to speak to speak to little goblin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know Ollie. Yeah, little yeah. Short goblin guy. Yep, yep. Um, He's pretty like a standing goblin, like bald head. He almost looks like Dobby from like <laughs> Harry, like Dobby. Very like um, it's like bald head, pointy ears, uh, green green skin. Mm -hmm. Um, just yeah. not the most intelligent, but he is quite for some reason quite loyal to the council. Um, and he just 
takes her sword and just belts off and goes, Enchant, me enchant! And then runs off. Uh, uh, Fast. Do, do I have to pay? You don't, yeah. No, you don't, because you're a member of the council. <laughs> so, he has to pay for resources. You can also say, hey, 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 I need help, I need help. You just see him, just here. You see him wave down the goblin as he runs past. Yeah, and he stops again. So Ollie stops again, holding this massive greatsword that's almost too big for him. And he goes, holding it to you, just goes, ha. Me help, um, again. <laughs> I, I got this long boat. Can you enchant it? Me enchant, me enchant. 300 gold. <laughs> and then runs off again. <laughs> so you, you lose a total of 600 gold when you get them back. <laughs> And then can I shout, it's like, we was, we was here to help the Queen. I'm pretty sure we can get them some discount of what we're doing. Okay. And I look over um, to, I look over, gone. Gone. I look over to her and I'm just like, don't use the Queen's name in vain. And, <laughs> the guy, Ollie's for your, gone. For your little petty reasons, don't go using the Queen's name. Do I need to roll and anything said, for uh, Sephira to repair Sephira? No, I just naturally repair because he's. Okay. And I said to the captain, the state, she's not my queen. Don't talk to me like that. She's the queen of the kingdom. Uh, Fa- Fandrin has managed to go, oh, there you guys are. And he goes, perhaps we should find Runespark and decide on what our plan is. Do we want to chase Faram or do we want to um, go to the, the float and sea thingy? The moving ice. The sea of moving ice. I mean, I mean, you guys are more experienced than me on this thing. You guys have been on this adventure longer than me, so I'll follow whatever you guys will say. We we'll still value your opinion. I would probably go over to the sea. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's go find Runespark. So that's what Fanon's asked you to do. Now you've <laughs> given your items to to you. Um. Yep. You, he didn't give you a timeline, but you probably guess next time you come back, probably be ready. Okay. Um, based on how many people are working and how how like. Okay. How much well, I'm in the sort of main, like hall, like yeah. where I left Sephira, and I'm literally just like, I'm probably still a little bit injured myself. I'm not even. I haven't even turned in my own wounds or anything yet. I'm just like. I'm pulling the the arrow out of where it's got stuck in a cog, and I'm pulling the cogs out and cleaning it up and making sure she's she's back up to up to fighting strength again. Oh, cool, perfect. Um, so you head back to the hall. Um, it's quite obvious to, to spot you dealing with this mechanical dragon in the middle of the hall is busy because um, it seems a lot of people have come in. Uh, what you notice now is a lot of commoners have been filling up the council as well. It's now become a refuge. Okay. for the people that they can save um, it's very heavily guarded there's a lot of um, soldiers started at each doors um, you're, you're looking six soldiers every room easy um, you've got a lot of commoners in here now you've got um, they look a bit scared a little bit run down some are sleeping there's sort of clerics running about um, healing people it's become a refuge basically and a, and a control point like this is where the war's being fought from Yes. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Anybody around that looks injured? A few people, but not like too injured. Most of the clerics are most of the work, but you can go around and sort of heal people. Can I? Want, or... Can I? Uh, can I stop one of the cler- clerics? Yeah, yeah. And heal me because I took damage. <laughs> I took guess, damage in nothing. Clerk goes. <laughs> you're not damaged that much. I was like, yeah, but you're a soldier. I, I, Deal so, with it. <laughs> so, I don't waste my spell slots on you and uh, carries on going. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna hand Fine. out, um, I'm gonna hand out some uh, chemical potions to um, any uh, like commoners or anything that I see. Um, I can hand out as many as I want, but I can only use one per yeah, exactly. person. So yeah, yeah. So you just hand, like, you hand it. To I, I'm literally just pulling this stuff out of my bag, and it's just like each, but each one is a di- slightly different shade. Yeah. Uh, depending on the person I'm handing it to. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, One of the clerics just takes it and just gives it a little sniff. And he goes, gives it the commoner. <laughs> and then he's yeah. just checking. Yeah. <laughs> but, Since this this is gonna be quite a long talk, well this is gonna be quite a bit of talk and we need to wait for it. Can I also take can I take a short rest please? Yeah, you can take a short rest, yeah. yeah I'll yeah. take a short rest and then use one of my hip dice to recover my if health. If you're like chatting or making a plan, as long as you're sat in one location, um the way I homebrew short rest is 
like half an hour or an hour of no or low activity work well no work but like low activity mm. um um stuff so basically that that'd be allowed providing you sit in this talk I will yeah. but I, uh, but I want to recover health yeah yeah for even sure even though I hit dice I've got 8 I've got 8 yes yeah, so you can do the same thing I've got 8 d10s <laughs> uh, in how do you have 8 d10 7 so that's um, fair enough plus my constitution isn't it was it just straight that uh, pressure constitution I believe I I'll double check for you I don't know how you find out what your hit die are like how many you get at each level I'll say at your hit HP then you get one of them at each level uh, I'll have to check I'll check the rules later on oh yeah yeah no I got it it's it's 1d8 per artificial so I've got 8d8 oh so you're yeah, so everyone's yeah, the same yeah. so he's got 8 rather than what yeah. he is but oh he's got 5d8 no you should have um, 8d8 oh no no I got no, because he multiclassed. You'd have, you'd have so, got, three of fighter level. And three D ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Do you add your constitution? Is it or yes. Uh, add your constitution. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's my constitution? It should be pretty good. Right. So as you heal, um, can we let's take a break? Four. Yeah. I sure. I heal four. I heal I heal uh, ten. God. Right, so welcome back. Um, so you're all healing up, I believe. Yeah. Is there anything else anyone wants to do? Uh, can I go back into the armory and grab the halberd? Yep, you can go back and grab the halberd. <laughs> Change uh, your mind, come back for the halberd, uh, come back out again. I, I'm going to make a quick stop at the general store uh, or alchemy supplies. I, I'm not sure where I would be better off going. Probably Probably the alchemist, I would say, alchemist. for that one. And then, would there be any magical items around in the castle? There, that I can uh, I can't use not just random magical item, but like something that magical can... scrolls or something you probably could use. I would I would say there wouldn't be that many magical weapons, but like magical scrolls. I'm, not looking, and... I'm, I'm more looking at like I don't know a ring or something that has a, like a, or like a cape or something like that. Okay, has some kind of ability uh, or something. For something like that, you'd probably have to go tell Gongos that's what you're after, um, and then have to. Can I go to Gongos? <laughs> well, <laughs> you can do. You get to like the the bit where you set the press press store, and yeah. you, you find Congress wandering about, and you can ask him to find something for you. For some stuff like that, will take time to find or time to get. Bear in mind, they basically just been bombarded by the vault's been robbed, uh, the whole wars yeah. thing. Press price store's probably been destroyed. This okay, is what they've got. I'll just, I'll just ask him anyway. So, just go in front of Gongos, and I'm like, Sir Gongos. Okay. All right, Arthur. How can I help you? Um, I'm, so, one, I'm, I'm just wondering if you have any magical items. It doesn't need to be weapon-wise or an armor or anything like that. Anything that could help us within this journey of any sort. That you, you may. Ha I know we've just been attacked, but if there's anything that could help the team, I, I have a search, but we're in a bit of a mess at the moment. Okay. Maybe, maybe, still. Well, I'll have a look for you, and when you come back. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna head over to the alchemist then, and uh, uh, I'm actually gonna show uh, the my like alchemist badge, like yeah. that I've got as part of my as a part of my guild background and stuff, and uh, just sort of show it to him and then be like, I'm I'm after some healing potions. I know stocks are low, but um, so they they go. Oh, we need. 50 gold pieces per potion. 50 or per resource. How many do you uh, have? We have four in total, but that's all of them. We can make them, we can strengthen them and make them greater, but it'll take some time. I'll take the four that you have as they are. Um, it's not that much, unfortunately. But it's just been raided, fine. so. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I will, so instead of going into my coin pouch, I'm actually gonna uh, reach onto my robe and I'm gonna pull four patches off, and they they become uh, gems of approximately. Uh, th actually, I need to pull two gems off, and they become sort of uh, ones of ruby and ones an emerald, and of approximate hundred gold piece each. And I pull them off, and I hand them to him so he can inspect them. And oh, that that will work. And then he he um, takes these gems, and <laughs> funny enough, doesn't use it as currency. Um, he then just puts it back in like some vials and you, you get the impression he's going to try and 
yep. do some alchemy over that. That's Can fine. I go back to the forge? Yep, head back to the so forge. So I have um, again still busy, four. and you're looking. So I'm just see a little goblin running about, like sprinting. So I'm just like, Ollie, can you help me with another weapon as well? Yes. Yes, sir. Another weapon, enchanting. Yeah. Enchant the halberd for me, please. Enchant the halberd. You enchant a lot of items. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we we are we what? are going to save the kingdom, so. What more items? I I charge and then runs off. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last one, Ollie. Bye. <laughs> uh, then you just hear in the in the corner. Must be Oli busy. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Gongos still here. Uh, Gongos is in the in the press of pride store where Yuanak is currently. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can I go to over there? Yep, you may. Oh. Sorry, what? Yeah, you may. Okay. Um, and I say I got two questions here. If I got this magic item, but I don't know what it is, can you help me check? Does. Um. Yeah. What I mean, you handed him. And then I hand him the necklace that I have. Oh, and he looks at you. Uh, Gongus looks at him. And goes. Oh. Uh, looks. Looks magical. Um. And he goes. I can't. Quite tell. Take it to Harry in the. In the Wizards Guild. He'll have more information for you. Yep, you take it to Harry. Um, basically, a tall, tall elven wizard uh, with a white dragon just sat on his back. Well, sat, not sat on his back; too big now. But like, um, sat next behind him. He just stares at you blankly. How, how big is the dragon now? The dragon's adult now, so it's like a adult-sized dragon. So it's pretty large. <laughs> the dice rolls are so bad. Um, he goes, he looks in, he goes, Whoa, it's powerful. Leave with me and I'll investigate further. Um, he explains the same. He explains the same thing as before, and he says that um, he can find something specific for you, um, but he doesn't have anything on him as of yet. Because, and I say, and I basically I want this magic uh, mirror, mirror, using it. Uh, so, so you want him to look at that, look at that mirror. Yeah. And he goes, as soon as you pull that mirror out, and he goes, "Oh, that's very impressive." And he goes, "I don't fully know the workings. Need more time." And then, do, do you need do you need it to to have a look? I'll need to hold on to it for some time to tell you the workings. magic minor illusion is there anything can help me to get that and I'm not really a magical user but I do want this magic oh he goes uh, perhaps I can embed it in a ring no, but it will way. cost 800 gold for resource nothing goes for free no, of course not. <laughs> Things like magic like that when you're bed items to yeah. cost money. They cost a lot of money and eight hundred is probably a good deal. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh I assume my potions are two D four plus two? Yes they I, are. Yep. Yeah. And and I short and I literally 
Um, that's outside of the things. Can I ask uh, how much is uh, silver cost S? So S, uh, times gold. times it by ten. So if you need eight hundred, you need eight thousand silver pieces. Because basically, I got seven seven hundred and thirty two gold, and I got forty five silver. That's four. Uh, Four and a half silver. Four and a half silver. Four and a half gold. So it's not enough. So four gold. You can't get half the gold. And so then I said, yeah, four and gold. I said, and I said, "This is what I have." And he goes, he takes up, he takes all that, and he goes, "I'll start, but I need the rest, or it won't be as strong, or it won't be as as there'll be like a, a downside to the enchantment." And, and then I say, "That's that's fine. I give you the rest of them." But obviously, once I come back, and then I gave you the rest of them. Make a persuasion roll, or deception if you're not if you're going to double cross him. <laughs> I don't want to double cross. Double then cross. persuasion roll. <laughs> I didn't know your guy. I didn't know. <laughs> a few people that you don't want to double cross in the thing. <laughs> Wizards are one of them. Probably. But you might not would double cross him. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I got 15. Okay, he's, yeah, he takes the money off you and he goes, that's fine, I'll embed. It'll take some time, but I'll embed it in a um, in a ring. Thank you. Okay, I'll go look for Fandrin and... Uh... Yep, so Fandrin's still uh, sort of with Rune. Like, you meet up with Rune Spark, Fandrin. Um, you managed to find him, so does you, Monarch. Um... So what was the what was the plan? Where do we go first? I think we should go to the Sea of Ice, so that uh, we can get some extra information. That's what why I think anyway. Yeah. Fanon would be more worried about the mask, um, so he'd mention. Or should we go after the mask? So I'm just like well. You know, you guys are better than me when it comes to what to do next in situations like this. I've all, I've I've always been taught, trained, and brought up in this town. So it's down to you guys. It's best to follow you. So I think that that's all I can do. Uh, so Fanny and asked, "Oh, you? What do you want to do?" And you, and Rizmo, I agree. What do you I, I agree. Information would be useful, but I, I genuinely believe we should be hunting down one of the bearers of the mask first. Uh, I'm sure if we, if they've got this information, they can send other teams to track down information, and with that, they can pass it to us. We have been, yeah. we have been sought out for action to, to deal with a situation. I believe that we should head after the white mask first. <coughs> the thing is, at this point, we haven't got our best weapon and armor yet, and because obviously we just just gave it to them to in charge. Uh, how how long is the how long is the modification is going to take? Uh, we we can wait a while. I. From what we've been told, the the teleportation is instantaneous, so we're not losing time there. But we're still losing time on the other end, if that makes sense. If if Ram Fanarin yeah. will say if Ram is there, there's a chance that he gets if he is there, um, there's a chance he gets further away. Yeah, if he is every there. every minute that we spend here, and it is time that we need to prepare. I agree, but every minute we spend is the the trail's getting colder for both for both paths. So regardless of which one we take, the trail's getting colder. We can probably wait a few hours, um, but after that, we're gonna have to move. Yeah, I think we shouldn't go for the, the biggest, the, the biggest mission yet. Okay, so we wanna point. go after the information first. That's what you, Monica, is saying. Okay. Uh, oh, I've always said you to go for green. information. So I'm, I'm the deciding vote here. Yeah. 
let's go for the sea of moving ice yeah i i do think the information will be useful i just thought i that think it yeah it'll be useful but then there is a chance they miss for for him yeah um if there's if he does get far away um but that seems to be what most people want to do as a democracy that, that looks like that looks like our plan um so you're gonna head back to um if you head back to the queen let her know what your plan is yeah yep yeah. Yep, so you managed to make your way back to the Queen. Um, it's in, in the viewing... Well, you call it, it's like a viewing chamber. It's not really a viewing chamber, but like uh, this circle platform. Um, you speak to the Queen, and she goes, Oh, have you decided where you'd like to go first? Yes, my Queen. We, uh, as a group, we have decided to head over to uh, the Sea of Ice. Okay. I will send the rest of my troops to see if they can get more information on... On, on Varam or see if they can keep an eye on him in case he moves okay uh, apologies uh, my lady but have uh, I feel a bit silly for asking this but I assume you have a couple of mages on hand that have sending uh, yes we do excellent um, I have a couple of sending scrolls myself to send information back from our destination. I'm just making sure that you had someone on hand that could send information our way when you get it. Uh, we, we we do. We can also embed a uh, tattoo on you, an insignia, and you can use send in for free with that tattoo. Okay. Yep. Um, so she comes down... <laughs> down from her seating area, she disappears for a bit, and then a few seconds later, you see like a trap door open just the way your feet. Mm -hmm. um, she comes out of stands next to you. Um, unfortunately, your tower's on you. Yeah. She goes, hold out your hand. Uh, hold out your, or where you want the tower. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll probably have it like on the inside of my wrist. Yeah, so he puts it inside the, the wrist and um, you feel like a burning sensation and you embed the, um, the owlbear, uh, um, insignia with a reed underneath um, for the purpose of this you touch it it's the same as what uh, um, Foundrian and you monarch have um, you okay. basically touch this um, you probably have it as well being a soldier you touch that and it will see if the sending message back to the, the t your tattoo is going to mm -hmm. send a message back to the queen okay um, uh, my queen I have, a f I have or something a else to cancel. I have something else to ask you as we are making quick haste on this uh, on this journey as we need to quickly see what the information is, if uh, we find out that it has, has no use, uh, we would like to quickly head over to where uh, Varum is. Um, in uh, uh, so, is it possible if you can provide uh, my uh, one of the heroes with a horse so that we can quickly travel? Because um, I think everyone else has the ability to m have a mount, except for Varum, who doesn't not except for Fandrin, who doesn't have a mount. Yes, he goes, we can give you a horse. Okay. Um, yes, because we can give you a horse. You can go to the stables. Thank you. What's um, the downside on the sending spell? I assume there is one. You have 20, it's any any range. There's not really it's any range. Any uh, how many times can I use it? As in... Not, no, no, unlimited on your time. Unlimited? Is it like once per long rest? or Because that's a level three. A level three spell. Oh, no, I'd say with a tau, Um Okay. No, it's fine. Cool. Oh. I'll take that. Um, it's the same as what the others have. Um, the downside is they can contact you a lot. <laughs> sure. Oh, and and you have noticed that tattoos sometimes burn when they want to send important messages. So. <laughs> kind of, kind of, kind of like when it's you like, have a WhatsApp group and then everyone just pings and next yeah, minute yeah, you look it up gets and really like, annoying. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's so annoying. Anyway, uh, okay. it's can I really go down downside. to the? Unfortunately, well, can I go down to the forge? Unfortunate for me. <laughs> I'll go down to Forge and see if the weapons are ready or not. They're not ready, they're not, not ready. ready. So okay. you, you, you would know that it will take more than, you'd have, probably have to go for a, a trip and then come back and it'll be a couple of days. And I think. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm just clarifying exactly what can be done with this. Is it very specifically that I can only contact the Queen or yes. can I use it as, a, as, as sending? You can't use it as sending, you can only contact the Queen. 
So you can only contact one person, that's which is the, probably the downside. That's what that's do I have? I can I only contact Queen because I am the yeah, knight, yeah, or so a member of the council? Okay. Right. That's what I wanted to know because if it's, you could just use it as sending, that is no, immensely no, no. That's, powerful. That's too powerful. If you yeah. could only use it as sending, that's ridiculously powerful. Yeah. You can only contact the queen or a or her acting member of the council. Okay. But you don't know who that will be. It's normally the queen. Uh, okay, then I will go to uh, Mouse and, yep. start, and start playing with Mouse. Yep. So as you're all ready, um, are you going to head to the teleportation chamber? Yes. I'll yep. head over. I think yep. some time, so, you, so. Yeah. Um, at, this mo at this current moment, I only have my heirloom trident and a great sword that I picked from the. Because <coughs> my other great sword's getting enchanted. Um, before you. Before you. As you head over, um, are you dressing up warm for this? Mm -hmm. You are going to a ice cold sea of moving ice. Yeah, I would probably. Go to the outfitters then and see what they can they can provide because yeah, they can give you like heavy clothes quite like heavy coats quite quickly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, same uh, for you. I can't get heavy boots though. Not heavy boots. Don't matter about heavy. Oh, I I can't. You can't because you can't wear them. Because uh, I can't. <laughs> can't fear them. Uh, no, it's <laughs> I'll not carry even them. that. My winged boots. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got um, yeah, yeah. ability increased. It's um, sealed <laughs> as part of his winged boots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Which but means everything, everything cannot else. Cannot change his shoes. But they are they're fairly they're fairly uh, robust. Yes. Uh, cool. So we want another feet like inside that. I'm assuming I can sometimes <laughs> take them off. It's like once a day I get to take them off or something. <laughs> Probably. Um, um, yeah, I'm just gonna grab myself ready. Sure. Yep. Is you uh, is you monarch wearing it, a cloak as well? Does it cost us anything for? No, for a coat it wouldn't be okay. much. You'd probably get that from. Just, um, I'm sure they have some outfits. known clothes around somewhere. It's a major city, after all. Right, so uh, double taste chamber. Now you're all done, um, and you're heading to the Sea of Moving Ice. Um, so um, there is a few uh, moon elves about, and they they begin to. Um, Basically, spin rocks on the wall. It's basically around a circular chamber, circular chamber, um, and sort of like pillars going or half pillars going down the walls. And each of them has like uh, almost like a different on different, well, like a series on almost like stacked blocks, which they have been they're turning. Is, is it purely magical, or is there any mechanical part? A uh, mechanical it? part to it. So it's I'm sort of peering around. Yeah, interestedly. Like, like a mechanical. But just with runic symbols. Yeah, like a combination kind of, lock. Yeah, yeah, a combination lock. Um, and there's um, so go round, find all these all these runes. Um, you get the impression they change the location. Cool. Um, and they they beckon you to the center of this of a of a, a runic circle of runic symbols all around. Mm -hmm. um, when you're ready. Oh, I'm, so I'm going to climb up onto Sephira's back. Yeah. And uh, so not much of a difference order into the into the center of the circle just so that I'm mounted when we get we get there basically I'm mounted on um mouse as a uh, mouse because uh, of favorable because of my ability favorable mount uh, to any places yeah, really. except for houses yeah. like special like any yeah. secret places or houses it can go into any buildings because of the my ability favorable mount cool here with me and I'm just like yep yeah. So okay, so you cycle and then you feel that the, like the magic just dis dissipates. There's also um, a sort of moment of just like purplish energy around you, just nothingness. It feels like there's no build, and you suddenly just sort of get sucked into like a really fast sort of sucked sucked out. Um, you what well, you first instantly like salt in the air, um, like seawater in in that kind of smell, mm -hmm. um, completely freezing. It is like. Norway winter time level cold maybe minus thirty something like that it is kind of put like an extra blanket from my bag like under me like on the saddle because metal's cold <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah for and um, for the purpose of, um you will get exhaustion mm -hmm. coats is or, this uh, affecting Safira not yet not yet potentially will um after a while with the rust and like it'll take some time okay. I'll keep, I'll keep, keep an her eye out of way of salt water. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on her. Um, uh, she can swim. Yeah, but in salt water would rest. Doesn't, doesn't specify. Doesn't 
Okay. Oh, no, copper's copper's fine. No, you're right with copper. Yeah. No, so she can swim. <laughs> Not that I'd want to go on her back swimming in Arctic conditions, no, no, but, but still. she she specifically got like a tag yeah, thing that swim, she says swim she can swim. Yeah, you never yeah. know. Uh, you dive in, come back out, and you're block vice. <laughs> see what uh, happens. She's actually amphibious. Amphibious. Okay. Cool. So that's good to know. Yeah. And it, it's copper. Yeah, not. Yeah, copper, but she's like faded green copper. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. Yeah. Um, and what you do here, um, now is you know that pulsing sensation. Yeah. Really, really heavy. And um, make a wisdom saving for everyone that hears it. So everyone, everyone basically. Uh, make one. <coughs> you wouldn't have to do it for Severa, but yeah, uh, Mouse. Yeah, I'll make one for Founder and Bagheera. <laughs> Good old Mouse. And you might look for his dragon as well. What was it? Uh, wisdom saving for it. Wisdom. Eight. So I'll make Founder and Ridicus <laughs> saving for it. That's for me. Uh, I got eight. eight. Uh, yeah. uh, for me, I got uh, three. Yeah. And then for uh, mouse, yeah, uh, fifteen. <laughs> yeah. Your your mount is wiser than you. So your mount's not affected at all. Uh, feels an immense sense of dread. Um, yeah. You can fire up, but the more you hear that immense sense of dread, obviously you'll start to become frightened. And is it a herd thing or is it a? It's just a pulse. Energy. Oh. Okay. And like an energy pulse. I'm um, just gonna like grip onto Sephira's saddle and just. Oh god damn it. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's just every now and again you just hear a boom. It's like well, you don't hear it, but you feel that like that pulse. Is it, is it like the 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 um like in sci-fi movies over the last few years, popular the <laughs> yes exactly like that. You know the, <laughs> the, the, the really drawn drawn out like yeah. uh, the new war new I say new oh uh, yeah the quotes. Tom Cruise one. Yeah. the Tom Cruise one and there's that the sound that the <laughs> the alien spaceship is yeah. more it's subsonic. more in your head and it's more yeah. yeah it's more subsonic and more a sound okay um, I wish we were level ten. <laughs> right. Only because uh, my brave heart of these, I, I resist. Wouldn't be affected by <laughs> yeah, but stuff like this. At the moment, I have saving of arms against it. Um, so <laughs> you, you do know. Oh, oh hang on. Uh, it's again. again. You get to <laughs> I do have advantage. Uh, no, no mischannic cunning. It doesn't doesn't come up that often, but no, no, it's it's rare to come up. And <laughs> it's, that is worse. It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep the seven. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> worth remembering. No, no, but that's, that's valid. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, cool. So what you, you you land on? Um, it's, it sort of seems to be like a broken ship uh, where the teleportation circle is. Okay. And you're effectively on a giant iceberg. Um, and you're you're sort of a higher up part of the iceberg, and as you sort of look down over the, over the rocky, well, not, well, not really cliff faces, but like ice cliffs, mm. you can see at the bottom is a tiny village. Okay. Um, uh, these tiny villages seem to be quite quite busy, quite active. It seems to be a, a very full village. Um, Could I fly up like twenty feet and just get a general perception of like the lay of the land and you yes, know, for sure. Just, uh, a sort of make a general perception roll. Ah, fifteen. I think. Yeah, fourteen. Just fourteen. Just four. uh, that's not too bad. Um, um, on this this iceberg, you, you can see like the, the village. It's the only village on the iceberg. Mm -hmm. um, they seem to be functioning quite well, but you can see that they're not quite um, level with higher up, maybe partly for protection. But you also get the impression there's something underneath their village. Mm. Just from just from the, the iceberg and, yeah. and I'm gonna come back down and in, sort of it's an unusual bit. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back down and sort of pass that on and and sort of just sort of what I've what I've seen. I don't know. Yeah, anybody else wants to have a little like look around. I mean how how far is it is it uh, full time from down it, but the, you get the impression they put the teleportation circle away so it's not disturb the tribe too much. Yeah. Um Can I see uh, well, not see, but can I tell my can I tell Mouse to give it uh, give the place a little smell? So except for the sea salt, yep, you can smell any of any uh, anything else like food or something else yeah, in the area make, or a, a, any any other 
weird yeah. smell that's not make it. a perception roll um, and check it hasn't got keen smell I have got keen smell that's yep, why so I then you've got advantage also do you have fly be fl- were they flying any flags or anything like that um, mm. they're not really flags so they don't seem to be affiliated with anything the only um, things they um, they all sort of seem to be dressed warm they almost look like Eskimos okay. dressed up in herds and, and run about they yeah, seem Eskimos to be or, or Hindu bits or whatever okay yeah, yeah exactly um, just get on get on to my dragon and fry Straight to the village. Straight to the village. Okay. Anyway, I got fourteen. Yep. Um, you can't. You can smell. It's something underneath the iceberg. Um, and it doesn't like not salt water or fish. It is an unusual smell. Um, okay. as you instructed him. Um, you can smell something underneath the village. Um, you probably have to go down to him. You begin to fly a black dragon. Uh, over the iceberg. You immediately see the villagers ring a bell and all run into their houses. They see this black dragon flying above. They, ri- they ring a, um, you're about to see this as well. Mm-hmm. A bell begins to ring, you're about to hear the bell. Like a ding, ding. Um, and you just sort of slam doors and run into the houses. Um, I think that's where we should stop. <laughs> as you monarch is basically scared of the villagers. So it'd be interesting way of talking your way out of there, that one. This is where the dragons are supposedly coming from, right? As in, like, there have been more dragons to the north? Yeah, there's been more uh, more recent dragons to the north, and, and you've uh, just flown a dragon right over the village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a whole uh, how to train a dragon situation going on. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> but before they actually, like, you know, yes. train their dragons. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's robotic. Yeah. At least yours gets away with it a bit more. I got maybe. Li- I've got. I've got <laughs> a lion. I've got a lion. And we've got a horse. You've got. Yeah, a horse is alright. <laughs> a lion. Well, they're um, top, like sitting on top of a lion. They were a bit more inclined to be like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bear in mind. It's like you see those tigers that with. those those shakes and stuff have, you know, and they've literally got them from when they were up. Yeah. And they're, and they're there, like, play boxing with these giant tigers, and that's because these, they're big house cats. Yeah, like exactly. That. So it'll be, a, it's, eat de- you. it's definitely a very interesting next session. <laughs> for Most sure. Most definitely. Oh dear. Uh, cool. So um, you, you guys enjoyed. How do you yeah. find it, Rob? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, as, uh, I don't know what was mentioned before, but obviously, uh, a drop in and out character I session or my character has yes. um, <laughs> uh, as the sort of almost primary healer of the party uh, uh, making sure that I try and keep myself up to speed on things has been good uh, but no enjoyed this session it's excellent to be able to yeah. jump back in again and uh, start with a, a fresh a fresh-ish story yeah it, it's good it's a continuation of the the first sort of book um yeah, the same ongoing story arc, but it's a, it's kind of a bit more of a uh, rejuvenate, uh, rejuvenation. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you're building up to to something yeah, more precise now. Yeah, yeah. Just like to show everyone, like Lee, uh, like Rob has just said, he's a in and out uh, kind of character. So this session might have him, but the next session he might not be here. And might we do have one to introduce you to, but um, unfortunately, like we said, he's not here. He's uh, got his uh, he's got work. Uh, on the other hand, so same with Grant, he's got work as well, that's why he's not been able to make it. And if you want out characters' backstories, um, that may have been, uh, or a bit more about the first campaign, um, leave a message in the comments below. Um, hope you enjoyed, and that's all from us. Thank you very much. Subscribe. <laughs>